Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. Is Ava good already? She has her milk. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so today is what day? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday, and so we continue this series of uh, uh, meditations on the mysteries of the rosary. And so today being Tuesday, what mystery do we uh, meditate on Sorrow. in the rosary? The sorrowful mysteries. Okay, and we're done with the first, the first and the second. So today we're going to um, try to understand the third sorrowful mystery. And the third sorrowful mystery is the crowning with thorns. Okay. So let's try to imagine what could have happened. What does the gospel tell us during that time when our Lord was uh, crowned with with a, with a crown of thorns? Okay? So this was after the scourging of the pillar. Right? Remember the, uh, the order of Pilate was just to scourge him. Right? To give him enough punishment. Hopefully, the thought of Pilate was, hopefully, if the Jewish people see that, you know, he has been punished enough, then perhaps they wouldn't anymore clamor for his crucifixion. Okay? So, okay. So, their soldiers were done with the scourging. But, they did not really stop there. The soldiers went ahead to do one very awful, and I don't know really how to describe it any more than that, awful gesture of mockery. Okay, thank you, Jana. That was the word I was looking for, mockery. They were not content in punishing Jesus with all the scourging that they had done to him. They proceeded further to make fun of him, to insult him in perhaps the, the most grievous way you can insult somebody. I don't know if uh, there's even a, a higher degree of uh, insult and mockery you can do because they were mocking Jesus, who is the Son of God, the King of the universe. And you would recall that prior to this crowning with thorns, he was precisely talking to Pontius Pilate. And Pontius Pilate asked him, are you a king? Right? Because the Jewish people were saying that he was making himself the King of the Jews. And our Lord in response to Pilate said, well, yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. So the soldiers were mocking Jesus for that claim, for the, his claim to kingship. And what do they do as a form of mockery? Well, they drape a purple garment around him and they fashion a crown made of thorns from a thorny bush and this they put on the head of Jesus and forced it in by hammering that crown into his head so there again our Lord suffers even more not only does he suffer the reputation uh, the loss of reputation as far as these soldiers are concerned because of all the mockery but he suffered again with his flesh with the thorns piercing his head so I can just imagine I just burned myself this morning with a hot iron and it's painful up to now what more what more pain could our Lord have endured after all of that scourging? And now, with thorns piercing his head, his flesh. But you see, 
many times this is this is this is what this is what we need to recall every time we pray the third sorrowful mystery but more painful than that piercing of all of those thorns into the head of Jesus the more painful suffering that I imagine our Lord experiencing is the daily the daily mockery that he suffers from us when we commit mm -hmm. sin number one but number two from the mockery that is not perhaps sinful but is due to our lack of love and to our lack of faith and it happens every day around us how I'll give you one very concrete example. The mockery that happens every day with priests who don't celebrate Mass piously, with people who receive Holy Communion in the state of mortal sin, with people who do not reverence our Lord enough in a way that is fit for a king when they receive our Lord in Holy Communion in the hand <laughs> when they don't even know how to do a proper genuflection before the Blessed Sacrament I mean these are these are forms of mockery that we many times we don't realize many times we are oblivious of these little gestures that we that we do and we do it mechanically we do it like well it's just part of my routine every time I enter the church I bend my knee without even thinking of what we're doing See? and what's even worse is what when, when we don't know how to respect our king who comes to the throne of that altar in that patent or in the throne of our own tongue right that is the king of kings the god who made the universe the creator of everything and our own creator our own lord who wants to come to us in holy communion yet what disrespect he gets what lack of reverence he gets from many of us what lack of care when our Lord drops on the floor because of some carelessness or some accidents that happened between the one distributing communion and the recipient what do we do eh? what do we observe we do in our own parish well, people clean the floor like they were mopping it for ordinary. I mean, just like they do every day or whenever, right? It's like nothing to it. Oh, a host fell. That's it. Let's just clean it up. See, there's no, there's no reverence. There's no respect. The protocol there, by the way, just for your information, folks, is that when the host drops on the floor, the priest, the priest is duty bound to do that cleaning up primarily because he is the primary minister of the Holy Eucharist he is the caretaker of our Lord he is the first one who should clean it up and only delegate it to what I call as the altar nannies when circumstances would prevent him from doing it himself which is really very very rare but what do we see happening every time there's an accident at the altar? The altar nannies rush there to clean it up, mop it up, as though they were picking up, I don't know, some kind of dirt on the floor. The real protocol should be that you put a purificator there and you leave it there. Even better if you can put candles beside it. That spot where our Lord dropped as a way of making up for that accident or for that negligence or for that carelessness whatever the case may be but no 
You don't see that anymore. And for every person who goes and receives Holy Communion unworthily, that too is a mockery. For every time that you don't do a proper genuflection before the Blessed Sacrament, that too is mockery. Every time you don't properly respect our Lord in procession, when our Lord is being brought around, like a king should be brought around in procession, that too is a mockery. And our Lord has been mocked, not only from the time of His crowning with thorns, but all throughout history. In every day, we witness it. So every time we pray the third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns, let us not only recall that incident, that time in history when he was mocked by the soldiers in that manner. But let us think of the mockery that happens every day. And let us think, as a resolution, let us think of ways that we, of which we can make up for this mockery. How can we make up for the mockery that our Lord is suffering every day? Especially the mockery rendered and committed against the Holy Eucharist. Do you ever wonder why here's a little secret I don't mind telling you every time there's an accident of the Eucharist in our parish I have made it a ha habit to go kneel in front of that spot where our Lord dropped that day that is my own way of making up and doing penance for that accident. No matter who caused it or no matter how it was caused. The fact is, our Lord suffered that fall. And I had made it my own manner of penitence to kneel in front of that spot and do my thanksgiving there every time there's an accident like that and my children have already followed suit and that is the way that we try to make up for all the mockery that our Lord has been experiencing all throughout these centuries because of our own fault really our own negligence our own uh, lack of care our own lack of love, our own lack of faith. Because that's what mockery is all about. These soldiers did not recognize, did not believe, did not understand, did not recognize that the person they were dealing with was their God. And so they played, they played around with him. They made him an object of entertainment. And that's why they did what they did to him. We cannot allow these things to keep happening to our Lord. We cannot allow these things to continue. At least in our own person, for ourselves. I encourage you, all of you, my own children, to please treat your God with a little bit more of respect, with a little bit more of love, with a little bit more of faith every day. So every day that you go and receive Holy Communion, think of the crowning of thorns. Think of how you can make up for all the shame and the mockery that those Roman soldiers gave our Lord. And for all the mockery that happens every day at the altar, every day when people receive our Lord unworthily, and every day when they don't treat Him properly in the tabernacles of our churches, or when accidents happen, or wherever our Lord 
is being maltreated. Let us have it in our hearts to make up for these things. Make up, make up, to make up for them. Okay? So that is the way we bring to mind the third sorrowful mystery. Making a resolution to render due honor and glory to God in everyday life. Okay. Bye bye. That's it for us. We're off to Mass today. Yep. Hey. Oh, you want to say bye bye? I have a guest today. Hey, hey Ava. Say bye bye to everybody. Come on. Say bye bye. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, are we shy? Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. See you.